Here in part three, we'll be doing things a little bit differently compared to the previous two episodes. With Yamashita Park and Chinatown, I was able to map out walking paths through both of those areas that would make sense when I attempted to match them up to in-game footage I would need to record later on. However, with covering Kannai Station and Jinnai Station, there's no real way of being able to create a logical walking path that would match up later on. So instead, we'll be covering things in this episode in two parts. The first half will be all the buildings that are north of Jinnai Station and where they correspond in real life. And the second part will be taking a bit of a walk around the station area itself. So without further ado, let's get started. To begin, we'll go over here to the northwest section of Ijincho, right around the area that contains Mirai Batting Center and the Drone Racing Area. I do enjoy this section just due to kind of its old school flair, like it, it feels like it's been there for a pretty long time. However, when we go into the equivalent section over here in Yokohama, unfortunately, in place of the batting center and the soccer field is a pretty large wedding hall that's been there since I think around 2017. Anything prior to that is showing either nothing in that area or just construction that was underway. And the construction that you can see in game is a large entertainment and condominium and hotel complex that finished construction around 2021. However, if you do access Street View from Google Maps, you will find that as of around February 2012, there was a soccer field complex that was in this area. Obviously, the one in game is not themed to Captain Subasa. It's a good bit smaller. There's really only just the one pitch in there as opposed to a few of them being in here. But everything else, the placement of vending machines, the what I would assume to be a, a themed gift shop as well as a cafe, some of the seating areas, everything else is pretty lovingly recreated for something that seems like it would have been kind of a, a throwaway thing. Like the land might have already been earmarked for construction and we're like, well, we can't start yet. Well, we can lease it out to somebody else, let them make some money, we'll make some money off of it. And when construction needs to begin on the wedding hall and doing all of the parking lot work, then you can go ahead and do it from there. But pretty neat to see that this existed, even if it's completely gone now. At one point, something like that was there. Sticking around over here in the Northwest area, we'll take a look at this building here. This is where Cafe Brave is at, as well as Part-Time Hero and Yakuza Like a Dragon. I don't think the building itself has a name in-game, though. When we hop down here in real life, there's a couple of things that are all around in this area. The larger building behind the more ornate one is the Yokohama Island Tower, completed in 2003. But I think mostly businesses rent out the floors in that building. But the ornate one in front of it is a former First Bank branch that was opened in 1873, part of that building being repurposed into the newer structures that are around it. There's not a ton to say around here. Most of this area, we'll take a look at it again as we walk forward in game, is under construction. But for the most part, it's kind of what you see a lot around the Kanai Station area is a lot of office buildings. You might see businesses on the ground floor, but for the most part, you're not gonna run into anything too extraordinary. However, you will run into these Pokemon post boxes, which were quite the nice surprise. It's just outside one of the entrances to Bashamichi Station. Now that we're over towards the river and past the other two buildings, the spot off to the left is a building that I believe has Yokohama City Hall and a bunch of other government branch buildings there, but you saw that there was a Starbucks as well as there's a food court not too far away. It's been under construction since 2019 in Ijincho, so who knows when they'll finally complete it. This part's a little bit harder because of the construction and kind of the general layout differences to make a comparison. The golf center in that building just a little bit further south of where this would be in game might be the only thing you could say, hey, it kind of looks like that, but I, I think that's a bit of a stretch. And a little bit closer to the water, one thing to point out as we pan around here 
I probably won't show it any further south from there and any of the other footage I have, but there is no Sadio High School in this area at all. There is one, I believe, like southwest from this area, a little bit deeper into Yokohama, but I never took a look at it because I really don't have any business going and looking at a high school. But even on Google Maps, the way it looks is completely different. So yeah, bear that in mind. If you're looking for anything like that, if you were to go explore around here, you're not going to find anything. And we'll take one last little bit of a look around here before we move on and check out a different structure. Next, we'll head a little bit southeast and take a look at the building that houses the fancy restaurant Le Nouveau Hama that you only enter a little bit here and there to finish off the menu when you're doing in-game completion. When we head out of Ijincho and back over to real life Yokohama, we'll hop down into street level and take a look at what its equivalent building is, and that is the Kanagawa Prefectural Museum of Cultural History. With construction completed in 1904, it operated as a bank for quite some time, despite being destroyed by the Great Kanto Earthquake. It eventually was turned into a museum by 1967 and designated as a cultural landmark in 1969. At least in my opinion, as far as comparisons go between Ijin Cho and real life Yokohama, it has a lot of the same features, the dome up on the top above the entranceway, a lot of the stonework along the sides and the archways above the windows and everything. One thing that we'll see here in a second that doesn't exist in Ijin Cho is a rear entrance into the museum that's accessible off of one of the side streets in Yokohama. Any potential back part of that building that you see in Ijin Cho blends in with the cluster of buildings that it belongs to in that area. Heading across the street a little bit, we'll find ourselves at a building that, while it looks like something you might be able to enter into and it's rather ornate on its own, this is the Jinnai Bank. This is something you can't go into. It's just another piece of set dressing that happens to be in the area. In real life, it's a little bit further north from where we were at at the Cultural Museum. We'll find ourselves at the NYK Maritime Museum. Originally completed in 1936, I'm unclear what the purpose of this building was back then, but it's been a museum since 1993 for Nippon Yusen Kaisha. Unfortunately, the area is now blocked off due to renovation and construction until 2026, which means this museum is inaccessible to the public. Across the street from Jinnai Bank here in Ijin Cho is the elaborate looking Jinnai Bronze Hotel, another building that is inaccessible to our main characters, but to me, a standout one with just how it looks. Heading a bit further away from where we were here in Yokohama, we'll head back down to street level and take a look at, unfortunately, another building that is also marked off from us in real life. The port opening Memorial Hall was originally opened in 1917, but suffered complete destruction in 1923 due to the Great Kanto earthquake. It was reopened in 1927 and still serves as a public meeting hall to this day. However, as of late 2022, the building is under restoration, and even by the time I arrived there in February 2023, it was still completely covered over and not visible. Well, maybe I'll try again one day. Heading over to the northeast part of this area brings us to Sunlight Castle, a building that doesn't serve any purpose in Lost Judgment, but is a setting of some rather important story elements in Yakuza Like a Dragon. Back here in real life Yokohama, not too far away from where we started our walking path around Yamashita Park, brings us to the Yokohama Customs Building and alongside it, the Yokohama Customs Museum. I believe this was the second building that was constructed for this purpose, the original one being destroyed in the Great Kanto Earthquake, this one being constructed in 1934 with the museum down there. You can see the entrance with the cute mascot that was opened in 2007. I never made the time to go into the museum itself. I do like the mascot character though, but the entrance for it is free, so if you ever find yourself around the area and wanting to check it out, at least you know it won't cost you anything more than probably a little bit of your time during that day. If there's one thing this area does really well, and I'm pretty sure you've been able to see it so far, is preserving older buildings and having a lot of rich history to go along with it. This is an older part of Yokohama in general. I think as you go further in towards, say, like, Yokohama Station, Shin Yokohama Station, you start to move away from some of that. But 
here in the port area, even if you're just walking around for most of the time, you at least have a lot of nice sights to see and a lot of really cool pictures that you can take to remember the area by. The last building we'll be taking a look at here is probably the biggest one. That would be Jinnai District Court, another inaccessible building, but something that is the setting for a number of different sub-stories that occur either here in Lost Judgment or over in Yakuza Like a Dragon. Back over here in Yokohama, in not quite the same area it's located in Ijincho, we'll find ourselves at the Kanagawa Prefectural Government Office. Originally opened in 1868, I believe this was not a casualty of the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923. And this is the main big government building for the entire prefecture of Kanagawa. General Affairs, Agriculture, Board of Education, you name it, it's most likely handled here. And I believe that's for every city within Kanagawa Prefecture as well. They'll have their own local governments, but I guess if you had to take care of something really big, you'd have to come all the way to this building. We're looking at the east side of the building first here. This part here is near the south entrance of Jinnai Station. We're not near the station in real life Yokohama. I love the fact that even the signage outside here is, is pretty close. I believe over here on the west side was a protest for the Board of Education going on there too. I'm not entirely sure. And then here's the north area as well. Taking a look at that. It's not quite as ornate here in real life, like the towers seem to be moved to flank the corners of the building, but I do like that they got a lot of it down. In the area comparable to where the district court is located in Ijincho, you'll find Yokohama Stadium and Yokohama Park, which is also conveniently next to Genbumon where we started our Chinatown walk. As yet another casualty of being there at the wrong time of year, I was unfortunately unable to catch a baseball game, but if you're looking to catch one of those at the stadium, go to a Base Stars game, you can easily access it via the Keihin Tohoku line and the Negishi line. Just take the south exit of Kanai Station and you'll be right there. Another thing to note is that locally, three of these structures that we've seen today are referred to as the Yokohama Santo, or the Three Towers, with the prefectural government building being designated as King, the customs building being designated as Queen, and the port opening Memorial Hall being designated as Jack. It's harder to tell with all the newer structures around it, but at one point in the past, these would have been three of the more distinct things that you would see on the city's skyline. Even with those days long gone, it seems like the name is stuck. Having taken a look now at some of the buildings, we'll make our way over to the north entrance for both Kannai Station as well as Jinnai Station. A rather fancy looking entrance for a train station. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And make our way across the street here. One thing to note as we start going through some of the footage here, it will shift from day to night, so be aware of that. I didn't find out until I had gotten home that I hadn't shot quite enough yet, so I have to make do with what I have. That elevator that we saw just a moment ago will come back to as well. At this point in the day, it wasn't too busy. Still a good number of people coming in and out of the entrance gate over there, but I also went through here during rush hour too, and lots of folks that had transferred over from Yokohama Station coming back through here, going into some of the other areas. It can get pretty busy. And our first shift from day to night will happen over here. But here at Kanai Station, a little bit of history about that. The station was opened in 1964 with the north entrance having mentioned that it looks quite fancy. That was renovated in 2017. And the station services the Negishi line as well as the Keihin Tohoku line. Both of those actually merge together once you get up to Yokohama station. Anything south of that is going to be the Negishi line, but once you get to there, it'll turn into the Keihin Tohoku line and then proceed north into Tokyo. The elevator that I had mentioned back there, as well as a staircase that's near it lead down into the Marinard underground shopping mall, which then leads into Kanai Station's subway lines. The Yokohama Blue Line goes through there and those gates and platforms are accessed underground. There's nothing like that here in Ijincho, either with the underground shopping mall or the subway lines. Everything we see above ground is all we end up having here. Looks a little bit more vibrant off to the right hand side here in game. That's due to the station just being positioned a little bit closer to Isezaki Road. Here at the Kanai Station area, we're already past Isezaki Mall. We're heading back over into 
areas filled with more office buildings and and the like we'll pan around over here this is on the other side near the north entrance there's a bex coffee there to match what we see in game the cafe is sitting there on the corner and we'll head over to the south entrance which is themed to the yokohama bay star since this is the entrance that's closest to yokohama stadium there's no stadium in game for the shark stars so unfortunately no cool baseball helmets up above everything this is over the other side of the south entrance it is cool seeing they even have the taxi stand represented here in game as well seems like it's a little bit more accessible here in real life since there's ramps as well as the stairs going up into it i'm not sure if it's the field of view in game or maybe just the way my camera captured it it feels like it's a bit bigger in game it's a little bit more spacious in this area but it's probably just my imagination One thing I also ended up undershooting here is being up on the platform and getting some shots in there as well. I had maybe one video I put up on Instagram as a reel, but from what you can see via the drone, it's a bit different. There's, there's no vending machines up here. It's as close as you probably can get for an area that's completely inaccessible to the user. The most notable thing I think I can think of is the lack of curvature in the track as you're coming into the station. It starts to curve a little bit left as you get towards the platforms. Seems like a lot of that actually happens just like as a right-hand curve as everything comes through here in Jinai Station. If you're actually looking to potentially see the station and you can't travel to Japan, a game like JR East Train Simulator is a good way of being able to see the station because it does offer, I believe, the entire Keihin Tohoku line starting up from the northern point in Tokyo and going all the way down to where it would end up completing its run when it turns back into the Negishi line. We'll jump here from the south exit past the north exit back over to Jinai Service Road. There's not a whole lot to cover here but I thought it would be cool to show it off because it does end up having a lot of visual similarities. This is the part where you would end up going to access the biker gang school story maybe not one of my favorite ones great idea just takes way too long to get through you can see all the service bays around here Yijin Cho covering the industrial look of this area seems like it's a pretty normal thing to have either businesses or something like this underneath the elevated train tracks there's another marinard entranceway there's a lot of them dotted throughout here I don't remember how many entrances. I think there was like eight or 10. I'll show it on screen if I can find out how many there are. But there's only three of those over towards Eiseisaki Road in Ijincho. The building we're passing in Ijincho here, I'll take a quick pan around and take a look at that because it, it does look quite similar. As I mentioned earlier, I did end up undershooting here a little bit. So my apologies for that. There probably would have been a lot more stuff had I remembered to be able to capture it that I would have liked to have shown you, but I hope you enjoyed our walk around the Kanai Station area, taking a look at some of the historic buildings around here. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. We will take one last look around Kanai Station at night as we bring things to a close. I hope to see you again as we continue to explore around Yokohama. Join us next time for part four, where we'll take a look around the bar area of Nogate Show.